Yesterday I got done watching Logan. I wanted to take a full 24 hours to digest it. Then today the goal was to go out to Buffalo, Minnesota here, film in a nice pretty area since it was going to be 60 degrees out. I have a t-shirt on uh, which I, I misjudged. It's not t-shirt weather. I did misjudge that. Uh, but I was having a lot of problems with my mic. It was on the fritz. The wind was blowing. Uh, things didn't work out. So I took some uh, pointless artsy shots and I'm back in my car. I haven't done a car side review in a long time. We're, we're just going to call it an Adam review. It doesn't really matter at this point, but uh, I was trying to be better. So I apologize for this kind of rough, ugly looking review, but, and, and Logan deserves better. Honestly, Logan, Logan's everything I wanted it to be and more slash less. That's the lead in. This is approximately the 45th film Hugh Jackman's done as Logan. He's been doing this for, I don't know, fucking two decades or so. It's, it's been a long time. And it is about time he had a proper send-off and a proper movie. It's too bad it's his final hurrah, uh, according to Hugh Jackman, as many people know. Um, because I think after this, you could you usually saw how much potential there was. And comic book fans and people that knew the character, uh, like I did, I'm not a comic book guy by any means, but I do know Wolverine, I know the X-Men pretty well, knew that we could get this movie if they would just push that R rating that it desperately needed. Um... And, and some people argue, you know, PG-13 movies are fine, and they're comic books, and they're for kids, and no, not when a guy has blades that come out of his hands. You need to see that intensity. You need to see that feral rage that courses through his body as he's killing guys left and right, and he does a whole hell of a lot of that here. So as I walked around the town of Buffalo and really thought about this flick, really had a chance to digest it, um, I came back with a couple things. One, it's somber as hell, which I knew leaving the theater. Um, and two, it's not how I wanted it to end at all, but I'm glad that they went there. I'm glad that James Mangaloid, I think his name is, is that right? James? It's the same director that did The Wolverine, which I did not like. I know some people did enjoy that one quite a bit. I, I think it was, it had its heart in the right, in the right place, but due to the studio once again making a PG-13, and, um, they just weren't really to, ready to go there. And it's, it's a shame. Let's see here. James Mangold. I was way off. Wow. Uh, yeah, he did the last film too. This is really weird. I'm filming in my camera and there's uh, three guys having a meal on a, on a bench right in front of me. They're having a nice little picnic together. A couple bros having fun. And then there's this asshole in his car talking to strangers on the internet about a film. It's very weird. It's very strange. It's very surreal. Let's get into it. Let's dive down deep. I don't want to, there's no spoilers, I'll talk about spoilers in a little bit, although I think people that are watching my channel probably have already seen the movie, it's been out for a day, and uh, a lot of the professional critics, I'm sorry, professional critics have gotten their reviews out well over a week or two ago. Instead of breaking down a plot for no reason, that's a little spoilery and it seems unnecessary, I'm going to talk about the things I liked. Uh, Hugh Jackman, of course, I've always liked him, but here you can tell he is, he is all invested, he's fully into this, and he gives it everything. He's weathered, he's broken down, and uh, he's just a shell of what he used to be. Not that he really ever used to be anything too great. And that's really what this film's about. Yeah, there's a villain. There's a couple villains. It doesn't matter. And people will say that's a criticism. Like, oh, the villain isn't as memorable as he could have been. He doesn't stand out that much. I don't care. The movie's not about them. They're just in the way. The movie's about the journey of Logan. That's why it's called Logan. It's about his relationship with Patrick Stewart's character, Xavier. It's about his relationship with this new girl that comes into his life, X-23. She's from the comics. I know very little about her other than photos I've seen where she's like a teenager. She's hot. She wears, you know, leather and all that jazz. But here she's a little girl. She's a little kid. And the kid is amazing at what she does. Not just from subtle gestures, facial expressions, but just the way she kills guys, the way she jumps from a body to body, slashing their faces in, it is intense as all hell. Now this guy's taking a selfie. Oh my God, he's taking a selfie of his food and his buddy. Get, get past it, move past it, Adam. I'm gonna move, I gotta, I gotta move, I gotta get out of here. These guys are, they're flustering me, I'm gonna hold the camera, and I can't hold the camera and drive, so the camera's just gonna move. Camera's just gonna shift. Uh, Patrick Stewart. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out here and say this right now. He's my favorite actor of all time. I I think Patrick Stewart is just phenomenal, and seeing him here as a a beaten down, 
uh, fucked up Xavier is incredible. And now I'm in the, am I in the, am I in the shade now? I'm in the dark? This is my first time using a camera and a car. <sighs> Moved again. We, we got it, we're here now, we're, we're ready to go. Judging from the trailers, I was expecting a buddy road trip of sorts, but it's, it's not really that. There's not a lot of buddy moments. It's a very, very somber affair. It reminds me of the road. It reminds me of Children of Men, which I think I'm gonna uh, do a three-way versus feud uh, on my show Movie Feuds. So Logan versus the road versus Children of Men. People have already requested that I uh, do it against the Dark Knight, too, because they're saying it's the best movie since The Dark Knight. I think it's better than The Dark Knight, honestly. I think The Dark Knight isn't maybe overrated, but it's not my... Uh, I, I like The Dark Knight. I respect it. I like. I, th I think that it set the, the standards for comic movies going forward. It was like, look at you don't have to be a silly, stupid little film. You can do serious. Logan took a page from that book, and it went all out. I don't even... If it wasn't for uh, a character reveal later, kind of an enemy of sorts later in the film, I, I would say this is the most serious and grounded movie. But because of that, which I'll get into later, it, it, it does still have that comic booky feel. Um, and I think that was maybe not necessary in the film. But uh, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. Are there flaws in the flick? Yeah, I think so. Does it end the way I wanted to? No, it doesn't necessarily. But it makes sense in the context of the film they wanted to make, in the story that they wanted to tell. And it's shot brilliantly, it's acted perfectly, it just all works. You could, you could argue that it's a little long, I'm kind of getting sick of these movies that are running well over two hours now. I think if you want to tell a good story you can do it within an hour and a half, two hours. But because it's, it's been said it's the final hurrah for both Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman. My God, I could have watched a four-hour movie of these two. Let's pop this cherry on the spoilers now. So if you haven't seen the film, shut this off, walk away, go do something valuable with your time instead of listening to an asshole in a car. If you have seen the film, you want to do a talk? Let's talk. Let's do a talk. Let's do, let's do a talk. The first thing I want to touch on is how great Xavier was with his, you know, his brain slowly deteriorating and he's, he's known as a weapon of mass destruction. Almost all the other X-Men are wiped out. It's been set, it was said at some point, kind of almost offhand, that he was responsible for the death of six mutants, presumably X-Men, and countless others were put in the hospital. I think they said 70 or 700, something, something big. I, I need to see this movie again to really pick up all the pieces. The way Stewart plays it, though, just really goes to show how much of a... Uh, an old school actor he is. He has the the ability to just switch it on and off like that, playing these different roles of a guy who's lost his mind. He's babbling, he's going off, he's he's pretending he's doing infomercials at one point, and then in the next second, he's right there with Logan. He remembers him, he's cussing at him, he's like, you know, fuck you, Logan, give me the pills then. The chemistry between Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart have always been there. It's always been there. And even in the, the old movies, just the one minute or two minute scenes they get together are some of my favorite moments. So having a meteor film with these two guys together in a car or going to Las Vegas together and doing some of these things on a farm, it, I just loved it. I absolutely loved it all. The girl, as I said, was great. Um, the one thing, and, I, and once again, I understand why they did this. The one thing is we don't get that moment between... Logan and X-23. We don't get that bonding father-daughter moment. You can argue that at the end when he's got the, you know, he's impaled that he gets that with her, but she's so desperately for as, you know, kind of messed up as this kid is growing into a, a lab environment and being trained to kill and to hunt, and she's definitely got some, some issues. The girl desperately wants this father figure. She's read about her dad in the comics. He's a superhero to her. She looks up to him. She idolizes him. And the fact that he doesn't really give it in return, just, it, it's devastating. You know, she holds his hand at one point, he, or her, his arm, I guess, not really his hand, and he pulls it away. She rests his head on her lap for a little bit, and then she drives him further into the... Uh, into the mountains so she can get to safety with him. She looks out for him. He looks out for her, but much more in a, not so much a father way, but just a, a general way, how he would treat a soldier. And I don't know, I, I really wanted that connection, but I get it. You know, he's been alive for hundreds of years. He's had loved ones come and go that he's known far longer than three or four days. 
and he's just done. He's been done for years. He's shot, he's drained emotionally and physically, he's deteriorating from the inside, his claws aren't working. The big villain reveal later was X-24, I think he was, who was essentially Wolverine in his prime, if you want to call it his prime, physically I guess, but mentally no, he's a robot. He has no feelings of his own, he's emotionless, he is just a patsy for the soldiers, he's a weapon, and he kills. That's all he does, is he kills. There's a lot of activity going on, sorry, I'm, I'm looking around everywhere. There's a couple fights between him and Old Man Logan. They're great. Old Man Logan gets his ass kicked constantly, as he should. He's not equipped properly to take on a younger version of himself. And I didn't... Once again, I get why they went here, because it's gr it's it's... Just tipping the hat to Hugh Jackman. He gets to play two roles in his final film. He gets to play that Wolverine that we never really got to see. The Weapon X that they always hinted at. The Killing Machine. He finally gets to play him. And he gets to play this older, reflective version. So seeing them go knuckle to knuckle makes sense. Claw to claw. It just, it, was, it wasn't done the best there. They, they introduced this guy like half-ass. They're like, oh yes, we built this guy. We were using kids as test subjects, but we realized, why do that when we can just grow one? Oh, okay. There's, there's not really a whole lot of backstory into how they did this, why they have this tech, and why they don't build more of these guys. But once again, it's... I don't want to say it's a comic movie, because that's a cop-out. This is barely a comic book movie. It doesn't feel like one at all. It feels like, like I said, like The Road, or Children of Men, or something very just depressing through and through. There are glimmers of of light. My favorite scene in the entire film is, of course, Patrick Stewart having a little monologue in the bed. He's laying down, he's all comfy, cozy, and he talks about how this is the best night he's had in, as, far, as long as he can remember, in years, I think he says. This is the, the best night I've had in years, Logan. And of course, it's not Logan. And this one beacon of sunshine and hope is, is taken down pretty quickly by a claws through the chest. It was, a, it was a heartbreaking scene. It was devastating. I'm glad they kept him alive just a tiny bit longer to get a little bit of a more respective close. And it was a hell of a lot better than that bullshit uh, death he had in X-Men 3, The Last Stand, where he disintegrates slowly and he does nothing but abandon the X-Men, basically. He's like, well, uh, you know, Gene's going to fucking kill you all, but sorry? And then he just goes. Here it was... He, he was, it was past his time to go. He didn't, he didn't have a reason to stay alive either. He just wanted to get Logan with his daughter, and he hoped desperately that Hugh Jackman's character would find some relief in his life, some happiness. He even says, he goes, look around you, breathe it in, Logan. This is what it's like to have a family and, and happiness and security. And, you know... That, that, let's go to the ending, because that's the, big, that's the big thing that rubbed me the wrong way, but I also, once again, I get it. <sighs> this movie was powerful, man. It's really good. Really good stuff. This is why I love going to the movies. Not so much the other stuff I saw recently. I just... Th there's, there's movies that are fun and action-packed, like John Wick 2... Batman Lego movie, but then there's movies like this that are so far beyond. It also helps that after this, I watched Whiplash at home with my wife. I hadn't seen it, and it's it's a few years old now, won a bunch of awards, and I kept hearing, go see Whiplash or watch Whiplash, and I did, and it was very good. So I had a very good day of movies. Uh, the ending, though, where uh, Hugh Jackman dies, and X-23, and the other kids run through the woods to freedom, I... I really, first off, how fucking great was it when she took the cross and spun it to an X? Holy shit, that was awesome. It could have been so campy, but because of the setting and the mood and everything that the director and the actors have set up, uh, the cinematography, the, the camera guys, it was just, it was so well handled. And I'm glad he didn't wear that stupid yellow suit. It would not have transitioned well. I, I heard some people complaining about that. Like, Really? You want to see Hugh Jackman in that thing? It's going to look awful on screen. I don't care what you say. And this was not the movie to do that in. They, they did a very nice job tying it with the comics and saying, look at this is all, this is all my little pony shit. You know, they're, they're playing dress up in the comics and this is not how it happened. Almost, almost all of this is incorrect. So he dies. But here, let, let me give you what I wanted to happen. And once again, 10 out of 10 film. 
But this is what I wanted to happen. I wanted him to survive this. I wanted him to go away with his daughter, get the kids to safety, but then he raises her. I don't know if you've played Bioshock or not. Bioshock is a fantastic game, great story. If you don't want a spoiler at Bioshock, turn this off for a minute. Um, but Bioshock, the good ending, has the protagonist grow old with his daughters, uh, or the, the orphan girls that he saves. He sees them grow up, go to college, get married, all this stuff. That's what I wanted from Logan. And it was hinted at from, you know, from Xavier. It's like, I, I, he so desperately wanted that character to, to get some redemption and some, sol some solace in his life. And that could have happened. He could have moved to that beach house where Xavier wanted to go with him. Well, I mean, they were going to go out into the ocean or whatever, but still. He could have raised her on the beach. He could have watched her go to school and grow up. And maybe she only becomes a teenager because I know X-23 in the comics is, is a teenager, I think. So that would have been a nice transition for Fox. You know, we slowly watch her grow up with Hugh Jackman over the years. A nice little montage. And then he dies with her by his, him, his side on a hospital bed or just... Maybe not a hospital bed. He, he dies, you know, out at the beach or whatever with her holding his hand like she did earlier when he pulled away. He doesn't pull away this time. He's there with her. And then we get that transition to her going off, starting her own school maybe, like Xavier did, or maybe um, she, she meets up with her friends again and it just ends there with a toast. It, it doesn't matter. But that's that was the... That was the end game I wanted. I wanted I wanted him to get some peace. He gets a little peace there. And, and here's the way they went. He dies. He looks at his daughter. He sees hope. He sees what he could have been. I guess. He, he sees that, you know, he, see, he sees... I think he sees hope there with her. Because she's not bad. He knows that. He knows that he, she is well better off than he was at that age. And so he just, he lets it go. He's like, I've been dead for years. I've wanted to kill myself. I've lost everybody I love. I barely know this girl. She's going to be okay. I helped save the day. We got rid of all the bad guys. And it's time for me to go now. So it is beautiful and haunting in its own right. And I respect it. Not how I wanted it to end, but I respect it. It's a 10 out of 10 film. I don't think I have anything else to say about it other than how great the action was too, very R-rated. I saw the trails and I, I thought, okay, there's a the part where she takes the cuffs off and he's going, no, no, no. And you see a couple of the action scenes. I thought that was going to be like a 10 second scene, honestly, because of uh, James's last film where the action was very sparse and it wasn't very good. But fuck, this was awesome. That scene goes on for 15 minutes, I think. It leads into a car chase, past a train, and then later we get that woods action scene, and there's some smaller moments. The whole thing is so damn good. I'm definitely going to go again. And I haven't seen a movie twice in theaters in a very long time. But well done, everybody involved. And uh, thank you for listening to me ramble on about this film, gush over it. But movies are my religion. And I'm sure some of you feel the same, so... Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you thought. Thanks for listening to this longer episode. And I'll try to do more Adam reviews. I've been uh, kind of lagging on them. So, all right, take care.